the Indianapolis Colts made a big splash higher on Monday that could propel their defense to new heights in 2024. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you all for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Hello, everyone. I am Zach Hicks, your favorite co-host here on the Locked on Colts podcast. And today we actually have some Indianapolis Colts news to discuss. The Colts have made their biggest move of 2024 so far, and that is hiring uh, Charlie Partridge, a defensive line coach from Pittsburgh University, to replace Nate Ali as the Colts defensive line coach uh, for this upcoming season. Uh, It hasn't officially been announced by the Indianapolis Colts yet, but Partridge did uh, wish farewell to Pittsburgh and all the Reports are saying that he is coming to Indy. So uh, Charlie Partridge coming to Indy as um, defensive line coach. He leaves Pittsburgh after eight seasons with the team. Uh, he was their co-defensive coordinator there the last seven years or last six years. Sorry. Um, all on top of being their D-line coach. He was also assistant head coach uh, to Pat Narduzzi as well there. Uh, so did a lot of really good things there at Pitt. And I know Pitt fans are uh, really struggling with that loss there that he is coming uh, to the Colts. Uh, for some background on Charlie Partridge, he's uh, 27 years coaching at the college level, 19 years coaching on the defensive line. He did have a head coaching stint at Florida Atlantic, which – You know, it didn't go super well. He had three years there at Florida Atlantic. You know, again, not everyone's made to be a head coach. Some guys are just better as positional coaches. But uh, Partridge definitely seems more like a positional coach guy uh, than a head coach type. Uh, 12 NFL draft picks in his college career that he has coached, um, which is even more fascinating with that is he didn't really have that big, you know, five-star guy. You know, he wasn't working at Alabama and working with a new five-star athlete every single year. Uh, the 12 NFL draft picks that he's churned out in his college career, most of those guys were anywhere from, you know, no stars coming out to two stars to three stars at best. Uh, some of the notable players, the guys that he's worked with for multiple years at his college stops is uh, J.J. Watt back with Wisconsin. He worked with J.J. Watt for three years there. Uh, Trey Hendrickson of Florida Atlantic. He worked with Trey Hendrickson for three of Hendrickson's four years in college. And then Kalijah Kansi, uh, last year's first round pick to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, had a really strong rookie season. Um, he was a guy who was, you know, was a two-star recruit coming out of high school, goes to Pittsburgh, develops his game, is a super athletic, undersized guy on the inside, and just a really, really strong player for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, Some pretty good stuff on the resume here from Charlie Partridge. I'm going to be honest, when they made this hire, I wasn't super familiar with him. But uh, just from researching and looking into what he's been able to do in his college career and some of the guys he's worked with and the coaches that he's worked under, I think this is a really, really strong hire for the Colts. And I'm going to discuss that on today's entire episode, talk all about Charlie Partridge. But the resume looks good. Uh, Pitt fans are crying about this, which one thing I really want to add to this conversation before we keep, you know, we go into the background of Partridge and and what he could bring to Indy is you rarely, rarely see when it comes to football, an entire fan base in agreement on anything. You guys know when it comes to Indianapolis Colts that nobody's ever in agreement with anything whatsoever when it comes to the Colts. Uh, But I've seen Pittsburgh fans all over Twitter and and social medias and all over everything uh, just just crying about this loss. I mean, Partridge was really beloved by Pittsburgh Panthers fans. They they really enjoyed what he brought to that team. Uh, He did a lot of good things for that program over the years and and it's almost universal, the, the feelings about him departing to the Indianapolis Colts. So, again, you never really see this with football fans. You never you always see like some football fans in a fan base, even when it's mostly universal, where somebody would be like, oh, he's overrated. Uh, he really wasn't that much like good. We need to change things up anyway. But from everything I've seen, it seems like every single person who was a fan of the Pittsburgh Panthers and at the college level is upset about this loss, but also happy for the guy getting an NFL shot. So 
This looks to be a big hire for the Colts. Uh, Charlie Partridge is coming to Indy to coach the defensive line group. And I also have a really, really cool guest here just for one minute clip. Uh, Christopher Carter over at Locked on Steelers. He wanted to give you guys some words about Charlie Partridge. He also covers the Pittsburgh Panthers as well as Pittsburgh Steelers with Locked on. So uh, here is Christopher Carter and his couple words he has to say about what the Colts are getting in a guy in Charlie Partridge. What's up, Zach, and all the listeners at Locked On Colts? I'm host of the Locked On Steelers podcast, Chris Carter. But in my other job, I write for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette covering pit football and pit basketball. And for the past four years, I've had the privilege to cover Charlie Partridge, your, your new defensive coach hire. Charlie Partridge has been fantastic for the University of Pittsburgh. When he came in, he molded a, a defensive front that became one of the top in the country. For four straight years, Pitt ranked among the top three teams in sack production in all of college football. And that was without ever having any five-star recruits, any superstars that were top transfer guys out the portal. They had a couple four-stars and three-stars, and they developed some really good guys like Rashad Weaver, like uh, Patrick Jones, and first-round pick Kalijah Kansi. But by and large, a big part of that was Charlie Partridge's designs on, on defense. He would find ways to get the mismatches, to create the chaos that would happen up front for Pitt, and that would be the key point that helped the Panthers win 20 wins in two years for the first time since the 80s. That's a big part of what you're getting is a great schemer up front and a guy in Charlie Partridge who is a big difference maker in college, and he'll get a, be a, get a chance to be a big difference maker for what the Colts want to do on the front of their defense. And a big shout out to Chris over at Locked On Steelers for sending me that clip. It was great to, to see what his thoughts were on Charlie Partridge. And again, just more fans of, of the team at Pitt just really, really showing support for this guy. And, and I really think the resume backs it up, too. I mean, again, 27 years coaching at the college level, 19 years on the defensive line. He's worked with a lot of NFL guys. And like Chris said there, I mean, he's done a lot of good work at Pittsburgh uh, the last seven to eight years that he's been there. So it looks like the Colts got a really good defensive line coach uh, from the college ranks. But what exactly is he bringing to the Indianapolis Colts? I grinded up all the film. I looked through Pittsburgh film over the last four or five years, uh, and I really got a good feel for what this guy brings schematically and, and what he likes to do with his defensive line. So coming up, we're going to transition to talking more about the X's and O's with this hire and how Charlie Partridge is a great fit for what Gus Bradley wants to do in the trenches. But first, did the game go to timeout? It's time to order in with DoorDash. Is it halftime? That's ordering time. Two-minute warning, you got it. That's your cue to order in. Whenever the game clock stops, that's time to order in with DoorDash. My co-host Jake Arthur lives out there in Indy, so he knows all the great local places that you guys love. Lost Pizza Company, uh, just the wings and stuff like that, just great. That's what Jake is recommending here. Another one, Walk On Sports Bistro with sliders, wings, devils on horseback. Uh, Jake says that those are some of the best that you can get from those great places out there. So Indy natives, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about when I list these places. Uh, Jake has given the thumbs up to all of them. So make sure you guys are checking them out. Get 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCKED23. Subject to change, terms apply. Don't forget to use code LOCKED23 for 50% off up to $10 value on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and spend $15 or more. Subject to change, terms apply. And also passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices that you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. 
All right, Locked On Colts listeners, we're diving more into Charlie Partridge. Again, this is a -a one-of-a-kind episode where you guys get me breaking down a defensive line coach hire. But look, it's the offseason, baby. We're talking great things that happened to the Colts, big signings, big hires. And I really do think we should be excited about this Charlie Partridge hire because he brings a lot of diversity that the Colts didn't really have in their front seven or in their front four even uh, over the past couple of seasons. Now, I don't want to sit here and say that there were bad things with Nate Ollie, that Nate Ollie didn't know what he was doing or anything like that because Nate Ollie was a good coach. You know, he did some good things for the Indianapolis Colts over the past two seasons or past three seasons, excuse me. Uh, and I, I really do think there were some positives to what he was bringing. Uh, but when you get a guy in here like Charlie Partridge, it's like taking the energy that you got from Nate Ollie and transferring that now to a coach that is just more experienced and has more knowledge in what he's doing. Uh, with the front seven and with the front four. Uh, So I do think taking these guys who it's like, okay, cool. You had the young coach that was getting you guys to explode and getting you guys to fire off. And now you get the more veteran coach that can just refine everything that that young coach was doing. So I really do think the secession plan of Nate Ali to Charlie Partridge is a really good move for the Indianapolis Colts. Because, you know, when you look exactly what Partridge was doing at Pittsburgh, it wasn't anything too crazy compared to what the Colts do. You know, it's still the standard four-man front. You know, we're not going to see too many three, four type things. We're not going to see anything crazy really on film with Pittsburgh that that the Colts don't do. It's typical four-man front, you know, three tech and one tech. You're going to have the the ends on the outside playing anywhere from five to seven to nine tech, depending on, you know, what kind of formations you're getting on offense. So nothing too crazy there. Uh, It's still going to be a very aggressive and attacking front four, but it's a little bit different in how they attack opposing offenses. You know, with Nate Ollie, it was it was basically, you know, every guy on the defensive line, fire off, get upfield, get that vertical penetration and disrupt the run lanes that way. You know, it's just everyone get forward, maintain your gap and, and cause destruction that way. You know, it go go towards the passer and on the way to the passer, stop the run. That was a big thing with Nate Ollie and with Gus Bradley. Obviously, a huge thing is we're going to stop the run on the way to the quarterback, on the way to the passer. Uh, when, when I looked at Pittsburgh's films and I look at what they were doing at the college level, you know, they do believe in the same type of principles there where it is disruption, it is aggression, it is shooting gaps and getting upfield. Uh, and it's also stopping the run on the way to the quarterback, but they accomplish it in a very different way. Uh, Gus Bradley and, and Nate Ollie's fronts are very static. You know, you're going to stay in that four man front. You might rotate a little bit within that four man front, you know, you might have uh, quick shifts and stuff like that to draw false starts and to uh, cause communication issues on offensive lines. But when you look at what Pitt was doing, they were slanting their defensive line on almost every single rush. I mean, it, it kind of goes to what their blitz designs were. And they did a lot of really cool blitz designs, which we're going to talk about in our final segment of today's show. Uh, but when you look at what, what that did to run defense, is it created a lot of advantageous angles and leverage for their defensive linemen. So, for instance, when they're going against a team that runs a lot of outside zone or even inside zone where offensive linemen are blocking on their zone tracks, defensive linemen go on the defensive typically. You know, if you're if your whole scheme is about shooting up field, well when you have zone blocking coming at you, you're going on the defensive, you're reacting to that that offensive lineman coming at you from the side and you're reacting to go get that ball carrier. When you have the defensive line slanting and and I guess doing doing the, your own version of a zone block on defense, you are now becoming the initiator on defense. Uh, it's a very fascinating concept. I really love aspects like this when it comes to football because you know defense is very reactionary. It's very reactionary to what the offense is doing. So when defenses get a chance to be the initiator, to be the ones that are creating conflict and creating conduct or creating. Um, uh, just contact up front. I really do love that when when you can just turn the tables on the offense, and that's what Pitt was doing with Narduzzi and Pitt was doing with Partridge these last couple of years. Where if you slant your defensive line on almost every single play, whether it's on a, a run a run play or a pass play, you know you are creating those angles and those leverages that the offensive line is trying to create when they're running zone blocking schemes and even power blocking schemes. Uh, so it's a lot of dictating the pace of play from the defensive line point of view. Uh, which I really like. I like, you know, if you're going to have a very aggressive defensive front, I like it for your defense front to be the dictating one in the trenches rather than being the reactor. You know, you can't be aggressive and then reacting after that aggression comes in. You, I want you to be the one who's dictating the pace of play, dictating where the play is going, 
with that aggression that you're bringing up front. So I really, really love that aspect of what Pitt was doing. Uh, their linebackers are flying downhill so much because, again, they're bringing so many blitzes for the pass game that when you're when you're stunting the defensive line and you're uh, slanting the defensive line, you're bringing linebackers to empty voids. So those linebackers are either going to run into the quarterback or it's going to be, if it's a run play, it's going to funnel the run play right to where that linebacker is coming through. Uh, it really plays to the Colts linebacker's strengths in Zaire Franklin, EJ Speed, who love to get downhill and just clean up the mess that, that happens from the Colts defensive line. If you're going to slant your defensive line a little bit more and, and initiate that contact, it's going to create more muddied, uh, just muddied exit lanes for those running backs to run right into the Colts linebackers. So I do think that if the Colts do incorporate more slanting of the defensive line, more, again, creating leverage with those slants, uh, I really do think that this could help the Colts run defense overall and, and just lead to more tackles for a loss and more run stops for the Colts linebackers and defensive linemen in general next season. Uh, if you want to look at how this worked for Pitt the last couple of years, I mean, I know Chris kind of mentioned it in his little clip that I put in here, but uh, Pitt was top five in sacks each of the last four seasons under Charlie Partridge. And also they were top 10 in run defense three of the past five seasons as well. Uh, they ranked 13th in one of those other seasons and then 32nd this past year as well. Uh, each of those last five seasons, they've allowed under four yards of carry. In run defense and in those three seasons where they were top 10 and run defense they allowed under three yards of carry in the run game so again that slanting of the defensive line and being aggressive with your defensive front it, it dictates play and it, and it can create negative rushes for opposing offenses and then obviously on top of that when you're doing that so often and you're creating new leverage angles for your defense you're going to be able to blitz a lot of guys off the backside and and just get into that backfield and create sack opportunities and and pressure opportunities. So I really like it from that point of view where, you know, you're keeping the aggression on the defensive line. You're keeping the same emphasis, the same points of emphasis with the defensive line, but you are doing it in a different way. You know, there's multiple ways to skin a cat, you know, that, 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 that old saying there. And I think this is one of the ways that the Colts can, you know, keep that same point of emphasis, but change just a little bit to, to match the new age of football, which is being aggressive through, you know, being diverse on your defensive line. Don't be static, be diverse, move guys around uh, and, and try to dictate the pace of play in the trenches. I really like that for the Colts. So Charlie Partridge, again, just from looking at it from a run defensive design standpoint, I do think this is a big hire, but the next thing is look, Partridge was brought in to be a technician that can work with, the Colts defensive line and work with these guys to take their game to the next level. But I have a theory that there's an auxiliary reason for why he was hired. I think there is another reason why he's hired. And I think it's going to be something that will be added to what he's going to do here in, in Indy with the Colts. So uh, we're going to talk about that in our final segment. What is that other reason why Charlie Partridge was hired and brought into Indy to be their D line coach? But first, happy Super Bowl week to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. Look, FanDuel has so many ways for you guys to enjoy the Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, me personally, when it comes to the Super Bowl, I love just sitting back with my buds, you know, watching football, talking football from all things football to life and everything. It's just a really cool social setting to sit there and enjoy with your friends. And, and look, if you're someone who likes to bet, you can also go to FanDuel.com and do some really fun uh, things with that. And you can even bet against your friends who are on the couch with you. It's such a cool thing you can do with FanDuel. So FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, Locked On Colts listeners, we're back. We're talking Charlie Partridge, Colts defensive line coach, hire from Pittsburgh. Uh, look, guys, I love this hire. I think he's going to do some great things for the Colts' young pass rushers, and I think he's going to just help them take that next step. You know, Dio Dangbo is on the on the fringe of breaking out and being a really star, really good star pass rusher for the Colts. I think Quiddy Pay did some really good things last year. Samson Ebukam had a great season. DeForest Buckner is a superstar. So I do think he's going to have a lot to work with here when it comes to development and usage of these guys 
But I do think there's another reason why he was brought here. And it's a really interesting reason uh, because I think a lot of you guys are going to love where I'm going with this. Colts fans for years, ever since Matt Eberflus, even, no, actually, you know, let's go even further back. Even since Tony Dungy days for some of you guys and stuff like that, even, even the 90s, wherever, wherever you guys go back with your Colts fandom, Colts fans love the Blitz. I don't know what it is. You guys love blitzing. I see it on Colts Reddit all the time. I see it on Twitter and everything where it's like, look, Gus Bradley, look, Matt Eberflus, look, Tony Dungy, come and blitz more. We want more blitzes. Just blitz, blitz, blitz. You guys want Wink Martindale to be your defensive coordinator because you guys love blitzing so much. And I get it. Blitzing is fun. It works in Madden. It's a great thing to do. It's not the end all be all, but I get it. I really do love blitzing. And I do think that Gus Bradley could stand to blitz a little bit more. You know, the Colts have been in the bottom five of the NFL in each of his three seasons or each of his uh, two seasons in blitz percentage. Even when Matt Eberflus was here, the Colts were in the bottom 10 every single year in blitz percentage. Uh, the Colts typically do not blitz that often. Uh, so, yeah, I would, I would love to see a little bit more blitzing from the Colts defensive staff. Now, I want to preface this this next part that I'm going to say that I wouldn't expect Gus Bradley to fully adopt this heavy blitz style that we see from someone like Brian Flores, but I do think that this hire kind of could lead to more blitzes for the Colts this next season. Uh, last year, the Colts did not blitz very often. Again, they were like third lowest in the NFL in blitz percentage, uh, but there was a really interesting art article by Match Quarters last year. Uh, he wrote, I think, on November 13th, so it wasn't fully through the whole season, but it was mostly through the entire season that Gus Bradley's Colts, 44% uh, of their blitzes last year were six man pressures, which is very, very rare for the NFL. There's only one other team that did that more than the Colts. And that was Brian Flores, Brian Flores with the Minnesota Vikings. Um, you know, when it comes to six man pressures, teams don't do that very often. They like to bring the five man pressures, the one extra rusher. That way you have every offensive lineman covered up and it's just one-on-ones across the board. Uh, but Gus Bradley, when he did blitz last year, he brought the house. He brought everybody. Uh, he brought six, seven guys, you know, whatever it was. He brought more than enough pass rushers to get home. And it wasn't perfect. It, it didn't lead to a sack every time. But when he did draw up these blitzes, it was quite effective for the Colts. Now, that's important to, to note here because Pat Narduzzi, the guy who the head coach over at Pitt, who has this great defensive staff and did a lot of great things, the guy where Charlie Partridge is coming from, they are the kings of the six-man pressure. They bring six-man rushes all the time. They love blitzing. Uh, and the only coach in the NFL who fully adopted that as well is Brian Flores with the Minnesota Vikings, who worked with Narduzzi at Pitt for a little bit and brought that style to the NFL. So Gus Bradley is the second most prevalent coach in the NFL at blitzing six-man guys. So now he's bringing someone from Narduzzi's staff. I think you can put these two things together where it's like, look, I think Gus Bradley – wants to bring more six-man pressures. And I think he wants to revamp what he's doing with those six-man pressures. Uh, to add more credence to what I'm saying here, you know, Partridge was the co-defensive coordinator there at Pitt. Now, he was more of that just in title only, but it, do, it does show just how valuable he was to what they were doing there at Pitt. And also, uh, I did have a source kind of tell me, a source close to the organization, close to the pit uh, program, that Partridge was responsible for a lot of the blitz designs and a lot of how they attacked in the trenches there. So, Gus Bradley, again, the coach who blitzed six man rushes at the second highest rate in the NFL last year, goes to the college level and hires his defensive line coach from the college team that perfected the six man blitz. I don't think these are disconnected things. I do think that, you know, again, Charlie Partridge is being brought here for his work with defensive lines and with what he can do with the Colts young defensive linemen to get them to the next level. But I do think it's going to be something that's going to be added on where, hey, show us how you guys disguised your blitzes. Show us how you added window dressing to your blitzes. Show us how you used simmed, simmed pressures and creeper pressures to be effective on your six-man rushes. Because I really do think, Gus Bradley is leaning into that six-man pressure thing that we're seeing from a Pat Narduzzi type. I don't think he's going to fully go into press quarters type defense and, and fully adapt that style of defense that Narduzzi does at the college level. But I do think that he wants to have a very effective six-man pressure package. And I think a really smart way to go about it is bring in somebody from Narduzzi's tree to help you design that package. So I really do think Partridge is going to have a big hand in helping Gus Bradley perfect that package. You know, we saw it on the Colts offensive side of the ball, actually, you know, Shane Steichen went to the college ranks 
and grab Tom Manning from Iowa State to help with the pistol package that they did to help with their RPO window dressing and, and what they did in the RPO game. I do think this could be a similar type role for Charlie Partridge on defense where, yeah, he's not, maybe he's not like the run game coordinator or the pass game coordinator or anything like that, but he is a guy who helps with that specific part of the defense. You know, he can do the rotations on defense. He can do the technical stuff with the defensive linemen and get them ready for games, but also he can help Gus Bradley with game planning with disguising that six man pressure package and really turning that six man pressure package into, you know, again, Gus Bradley was more playing with it last year, but I do think, that a guy like Charlie Partridge can take that pressure package to the next level uh, in 2024. So I think it's a really interesting thing. I, I'm really excited to see if what I'm guessing here comes, comes to fruition this next season, because look, Partridge again, was a part of this really good defense in college that brought a lot of six man pressure. And Gus Bradley last season was the second highest coach at running those six man pressures. So I don't think that's a coincidence. I really do think that there is a reason for this hire and it involves that to a degree. And I do think it'll be a fascinating to see fascinating thing to see what the Colts do with their six man pressure packages next year, because if they are going to adopt what, what Pittsburgh did with them, it's going to be a really, really fun blitz package. And again, I don't think the Colts are going to jump up from 17% blitzing to 90% blitzing or anything like that. But I think we could see a little bump from 17 to 22, 23, 24, 25% maybe. And I think that would be really good for all of you guys. And I know you guys love your blitzes. So uh, that's definitely something to watch this next year with the Colts is, you know, what does Charlie Partridge do with the Colts six man pressure package? And, and does it look a lot like what the, what Brian Flores is doing in Minnesota and what Narduzzi has been doing at Pitt for the last couple of years? I think, it's a really, really cool thing to watch if you're a football nerd like me. Uh, but let me know in the comments what you think. Would you guys want the Colts to blitz more? I, I feel like I have a good good feel on that pulse here when it comes to Colts fans. But uh, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, before I get going here today, guys, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every single league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. If you don't already, follow at Locked On Colts, at Jake Arthur NFL, and at Zach Hicks 2 on Twitter. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube where we list your podcast. We love your guys' ratings, reviews, and we'll catch you guys back here bright and early tomorrow morning.